calling iFly San Diego. Can I put you on hold for a brief moment? How long are you talking about? Sir? Excuse me? How long of a hold? I got my family uh, here. About 30 seconds. Okay, great. We'll see about this. Uh, 30 seconds. And if they don't come back in 30 seconds, I'm going to ask for a discount because they're being discriminatory, racial. Okay. Thank you so much for holding. My name's Angela. How can I help you today? Yeah, um, I'm looking to book something, an event. Absolutely. Uh, how many people were you thinking? 14. Perfect. Let's, yeah. Uh, what what day were you looking for? It's uh, probably going to be in a year. So probably around August, something like that. So you're looking for August 2019. Yeah. What's the weight limit on these things? Uh, like person size? Yeah. Yeah. So we do 300 pounds is our weight limit. Okay, and that's for a person? Can you do like two people at a time or something like that? We do stick with one person at a time for our first-time flyers, uh, just because we don't want anyone crashing into each other um, and causing a dangerous situation. Well, but if once one you're person... signed off to be like a level one flyer... Okay, well, what if someone Sorry, has, has like a physical uh, disability and they need to go with someone else simultaneously? a problem we would staff multiple instructors so there's always going to be an instructor in the tunnel with you coaching you and teaching you how to fly um, if someone needed extra support we would bring in a second instructor um, yeah. to bring to bring that person in because I don't I, you know I don't want to make sure we're going to be safe we don't want to crash and splash you know I might end up with my face in his ass or something I just don't want it to happen no, not at, not at all. Um, it's very safe. We always have, like I said, an instructor in the tunnel with you who's going to be coaching you and teaching you how to get that stable body flight and how to be safe while doing it. Okay. What is your, uh, your surface area in, in meters precisely? Um, so we have a 14-foot diameter tunnel, so it's a, a little over four meters. Four meters. Okay. Can we, is there a bullseye on there? That would help the event if there is. So we, we're, we're not a skydiving location. We are a, uh, an indoor tunnel. So there isn't necessarily a bullseye per se. You're always just in the center of a tube. Okay. Can we get other objects in there as well? Just kind of spice up the whole thing. No, not at all. Um, so no we do dogs not bring, or anything like that? We do like not that? bring anything into the tunnel at all like that. We can't do any sort of tricks or have a dog join us or anything. Just for a photo. No, un unfortunately, we don't allow any animals in the tunnel. Um, and then all of, all, like I said, everything's kind of centered around your safety. So bringing anything in there that's going to add additional wind resistance is isn't something that we would do. Yeah, I mean, we sh we should be okay though. I mean, he's he's played all sorts of games that have skydiving, so he should be able to figure it out. And I'm experienced as well. Unfortunately, but... you'd have to go somewhere else because we don't allow any sort of uh, animals or anything like that in the tunnel. Okay, well, how about, can we just fill it with fog or, or smoke or something like that? Unfortunately, the physics wouldn't work like that because it is an air-circulating tunnel. So yeah. if you put anything like in that, it would just be distributed across the tunnel and it wouldn't work. Yeah. Are you a physicist? Excuse me? Are you you're the physicist on site currently? No, I am, we don't staff anyone like that. I do, however, work at the tunnel, and I do have experience with fog machines and things like that. Yeah, if I could speak to a physicist or, or some kind of ge geometrist. Unfortunately, I can connect you to um, one of the local colleges and everything like that, because I think they would be able to help you. Well, I have I spoken with the flight. Department of Physiology, and they told me it should be, it should be no problem to get some, some vape in there. It's just smoke from a vapor device. Unfortunately, we don't allow any metal in the tunnel because it could chip the glass or damage a person no, because it is a recirculating tunnel. It's so vapor. anything that dislodged would actually go back up, come back around and hit you. So like I said, safety is our number one priority. So we wouldn't allow anything like that in the tunnel. No, it's, it's vapor. You, you fly through it. It passes through you. So uh, I'm confused on what you mean by that. But if you can just, um, just pump in some vape, 
some vapor um, from the outside before we get started. So you wouldn't be able to fill the tunnel because the air is consistently recirculating. So you just wouldn't be able to do that because all the particles would evaporate. But we can, if we just have a consistent just input of, of vape vapor in there, I think it would be we'd be safe. Unfortunately, again, it still it, it wouldn't work like that because the particles would just evaporate as you went along. But this is this is for our blessing. This is a religious procedure, and we want to make sure it's blessed with the holy vapor before we get started, just for our safety. But with but the God, you know. Absolutely, and I completely understand that. Would like to respect all of your religious beliefs. However, it there is no way to be able to fill the tunnel like that because the air is in a consistent recirculating pattern. Well, what if we dropped it in from the top with like a tube or, or a funnel or something like that? No, unfortunately, there's nothing like that. I'm not sure that that's correct. I think if I just drop it in from the top and just kind of curve the vapor towards the vortex, it might just stay uh, in constant circulation around their parishioners. Sir? I'm so sorry. I think you have the wrong person. So there is, there is no top of the tunnel, per se, that you could drop something into. How the building is built is the fans are actually located at the top, so any access that yeah. you would get through the top would actually increase the particle evaporation like what I was talking about earlier. But we can have a certified deacon go up there and just kind of start the service. There's two blessed uh, vapor disks. Hello? I'm so sorry. I think you're confused. Um, I would be happy to put you um, in contact with our uh, our corporate office who'd be able to explain probably in a little more detail than I can. Is that where the physicist is going to be? Don't you have a physicist on site? We don't have one on site. We are corporately owned and our offices are based in Austin, Texas. So they would be able to speak more accurately. I don't know if they have a physicist per se, but they do have architects and things like that, engineers. Okay, I mean, we can just kind of, I mean, I think it's as simple as just setting up a, you know, kind of a blessed cloth in a triangular format over the top, the, the top fan. And if we just start our so vapor there, incense procedure, I think it would just transport and kind of just flow so throughout. So we wouldn't allow anything like that in the tunnel because, like I said, it would be, it would become a projectile and come back around and hit you at about 100 miles an hour. But it's vapor. So in the interest of safety... We wouldn't allow any foreign objects in the tunnel at all. But it's vapor. It's gas. It's it's just, you know, it's holy vapor. We have a licensed vapist that's been doing this for the past 16 months. Sure, I understand that. But you said incense and cloth. So that, to me, is not vapor. That's a physical object that could become damaging but, uh, both to our building and to you as a flyer in there. But on top of the building, we won't be inside the building. They'll be starting the procedure on top of the building. So there is no access from our roof into the tunnel itself because it is an entirely closed system. So we can just inject it with some sort of like tubing. We can just get the the vapor kind of. No, pumped you in wouldn't there. be able to. You wouldn't be able to permeate our building at all because of the way the engineering is designed. You wouldn't be able to drill into it or anything like that. Well, it doesn't require a drill. I mean, it's it's vapor, so it should just seep through whatever uh, sort of you know blemishes or, or cracks that you have in the building. It should make its way through if we just power it through with a gas power generator. So I don't understand how you would get a gas-powered generator on top of our building. I'm very confused about this, but like I said, I'd be happy to uh, put you in contact with someone from our corporate office who'd be able to talk a lot more in the specific details of what you're trying to do, and yeah. we'd be happy to set something up with you. Since you're looking at a couple months in advance, we'd yeah. be able to... That's why I'm calling, because I know it's a little bit unorthodox, no but it's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a miraculous service for our parishioners. They're going to enjoy... Feeling the vapor pass through them in a, over 100 miles an hour. Okay, well, can I give you their number, or can I transfer you to them so that you could talk specifics with them? Yeah, do you transfer me to the physicist or the psychologist? To our corporate office. Okay, uh, what's the number, just in case I get disconnected? It is 512 uh -huh. 774 uh -huh. 4359. And uh, what's the number for your uh, physicist? 
I, I'm not sure of their exact extension, but like I said, I don't know if we have a physicist on site, but we do definitely have engineers, architects, plus a lot of uh, our corporate staff would be able to help you with the group event that you're talking about. Yeah, I'll talk to any engineer or chemist that you have over there currently. Perfect. Like I said, we don't have anybody on site, but I'll be happy to transfer you. Oh, you don't have anybody on site that's uh, involved in any sort of sciences? You don't have any uh, STEM people over there? We don't have anybody currently on site. Um, we do have a STEM coordinator. Unfortunately, they've already gone home for the day. Yeah. Um, but I can, like I said, refer you to our corporate offices, and they would be able to explain um, and answer in detail some of the more specific questions that you have. What about the, the, uh, the structural engineer? I could speak with him. I'm not sure of their exact extension, but I can transfer you, like I said, to our corporate office. And they'll be able to put me in touch with a structural engineer and a physiologist? And probably I'm not sure physician. about the specifics and the degrees of our, of our staff, but they will be able to, they're the best people to assist you with your questions. Okay, if I could just speak to the physician and the physicist as well as the structural engineer, I think that will cover a lot of our bases. Go ahead, transfer me through. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, goodbye. Let's see, am I actually being transferred? I'm not sure. I just don't know what's going on over there. It doesn't sound feasible. I think it should be very easy to, to accomplish. Oh, damn, that sounds crazy. Okay. Let's try to get someone back on the line. And then maybe we can get, get her just a little bit spicy. We'll see what happens. Thank you for calling. Donga calls are based and red pill. Thank you for calling iFly San Diego. My name's Angela. How can I help you today? Angela, I just got transferred to uh, the physicist, but I uh, got disconnected. Oh, that's because in Austin, it's... Uh it's 8.08, so unfortunately, I think they're already gone for the day. Um, I can transfer you again and have you connect to someone via voicemail, but your best bet would be to call them tomorrow. I need to uh, speak with someone hours. right away. If you have a personal cell phone number for the physicist on call or the physiologist, I can speak to them right away. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. Um, all I have is this corporate number. You don't have the corporate number? You don't have the structural engineer? What's the firm that they work with? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know. The only thing I can do is connect you to our corporate office. Okay, sir. Okay, so let me transfer you one more time, and then the best bet would be to leave a voicemail. Otherwise, give me that number that I called you back at earlier, that I gave you earlier today. Yeah. Call them tomorrow during the daytime. Yeah. Do you need me to fine. read it to you again? Possibly. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. All right. Tell me whenever you're ready with a pen. I'm. I'm ready. I gotta. Let me uh, mute the, mute the stream. Let me. It's kind of kind of loud. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm ready. It is five one two. Yeah. Seven seven four. Seven four, three, two five, four. One two. I can't see it. What's the first three digits? Yeah, five, two. Seven, seven, four. Eight, oh, eight. And they're in Austin, Texas, you said? Yes, that's correct. I just... I'm not, I don't see it anywhere. I don't see it on... on, on on the map. You said it's I'm so sorry, I don't what you mean you don't see it? I'm looking it up on Google, sir. On Google Maps. Absolutely. Yep, iflyworld.com and then I will have our corporate office. It's not working. I'm trying to fix my computer. Well, I'm certain that your computer's not going to work with a bomb going off in the background, but if you would like me to read that number for you again, I'd be happy to. No, I'm just putting up Christmas decoration. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas to you, too. Yeah. 
Are you doing anything for Christmas this year? This is going to be a miraculous season. Do you have your advent calendar open up right now? Me? No, I am at work, so I do not have my advent calendar here. But if you're ready with a pen, I'd be happy to read you that number again. I can. We can share our, our treats on our advent app together. If you want to give me your email address, address, I'll just give you my referral code for the advent calendar app. Absolutely. Are you ready? Yeah, what's your, your email? It is info. Yeah. San Diego at iFlyWorld.com. What's your personal email? So that is the email that we use when we're here at work, and then that routes all of our contacts, and anyone who answers the phone would be able to assist you. What's your personal email address? That is my email address. Like I said, uh, that's the one that we all have access to. That way, if anybody has any questions, you can contact them, and then we're all on the same page. I need to get that personal address from my flying, my, my flying vapors. We can talk to the physicists together and give physical. I'm so sorry. I think you are no longer taking this seriously. So if you have any questions that I can answer that I have not already, I'd be happy to help you. Well, I'm confused, sir. Okay. Did you have a question or anything I could answer for you? Are you baptized? I do not believe that that is relevant to this situation. It is. However, if you would like to be transferred again, I'd be happy to help you. Well, this is a religious service we're trying to book. Are you baptized, sir? Again, I do not see how that is relevant. If you would like to speak to our corporate office, they'd be happy to help you with any and all of your needs. I'm baptized in circumcised. Okay. I had a lot of that go. Okay.